always wondered how Benjamin Franklin reacted when his kite discovered electricity. I looked it up in the dictionary and said he was shocked. <laughs> and what kind of shoes do frogs love at Cope and Toad? <laughs> and when uh, the parents asked her, asked her son, why did you eat your homework? The son replied, my teacher said it was a piece of cake. <laughs> and why do you ever see marriages in libraries? Because they're always booked. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I like these one-liners. <laughs> Whoever thinks of these must be smart, right? No. There's so many of them, for sure. If you have your Bible, say Jonah chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he lay and he was fast asleep. But the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, pray, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? And what is thy country, and, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land, and then verse 10 says, Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Now have you ever felt like running away from God? <laughs> have you ever gone in the darkness and said, God's not watching me, he doesn't see me, it's this morning when I was going to Brooks, I had a nasty, nasty fly. And so when I turned on County D, that fly was getting close to the window. So I put it down just a little bit and I flicked that little fly and out the window it went. And I am praying that I never see him again. But the Lord knows where he's at. And as I'm driving down the road, I just understand that the God that we serve today that he is so powerful, all-knowing, and so wonderful. Why is it that sometimes we think we can get away from God? Why is it sometimes we think we go in the dark and do our sinning? Why is it we think we have secrets kept, and yet God knows our secrets in our heart? Right. Yeah, right. Amen? Right. Probably the most important person who knows our secrets. Amen. But Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites. Because in verse 10, they knew that he had run away from his calling. What was his calling? He was to go to the Ninevites, who served Dagon, who was the fish god. And they served him. They were brutal people. The Assyrians were there as well. And he did not want to be a preacher to them. Now, I know none of you ever get scared when God calls you to do something. I know none of you ever rebel when God wants you to do something, but I have many, many times. And after my first year in Bible college, you know, I got a D minus in the subjects, and I just made it by one question. And, 
and uh, the classes that I needed to see, and I just made it. And my first summer, I'm driving a tractor, and I said, Lord, I know you called me to preach, but I'm going back to farming. There's no way that I want to be a preacher. And I said, I know you called me, but there's no way. And I had all kinds of things happen to me that summer. And finally, the last accident that happened, I said, Lord, okay, I'm going back to college. And, you know, God is so interesting because he allows good things to happen to us and bad things. Sometimes the bad things help steers to follow his call. Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites. He was assigned to them, and of course, in verse 3, uh, Jonah ran from God. He said, Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of of the Lord. And then verse 10, it says, uh, Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. He told them he was running away. He said, I want to go to Tarsus. And you know, when God calls you to do something, he makes a way for you. And God has a purpose for you this morning. He has a plan for you. Was I ever planning on being in Endeavor, Wisconsin? Not in your life. Amen. But here I am. God has a way when you try to run away sometimes that he begins to work in your life to get you back to where you're supposed to be. Back in 1990, I ran away from the calling again. Went up to Dodgeville, Wisconsin to farm on a 360 acre farm and I told my wife I wasn't going to go to church anymore. I felt God had abandoned me and you know she's my wife is a tough woman and she's like you're going to go to church but the second Sunday I fell on my knees at the basketball Bible church there and there were 35 men and I said I know God's called me to preach. I ran to Dodge to get away from the calling and God worked in my heart, and then I did a youth ministry. We had 40 teenagers, and then uh, I got to preach again every week, and then got back in to church again as a pastor. So, uh, but sometimes we run away from God's calling because we're afraid. We're afraid that God's not going to be with us. We think that God's going to abandon us, and you know the Bible says He'll be with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. I know none of you have ever thought that God has abandoned you, but I have. And yet God is always with me. He's always with me. I want to go to Psalms 139. Hold your spot there, Jonah. But in Psalms 139, one of the first verses I memorized after I got saved. Don't ask me to quote it now word for word, but... <laughs> But God's question to Jonah was this. Is it right for you to be angry at God? And I ask you the question this morning. Is it your right to be angry at God for maybe the situations that he's led into your life or that the Lord has called you to do something and you got angry and said, I don't want to follow this call? It's easy to do, isn't it? But look at what Psalms 139, beginning at verse 8 says. If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And if I say, uh, surety, the darkness shall cover me, even the light shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb, and I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Do I have a right to be angry at God? No. No, I don't. 
Jonah said, Lord, you called me to preach to the Ninevites, but I am going to get on a boat and go to Tarshish and get away from this call. But did you know when you try to run away from God's will, He can put roadblocks in your life? Amen. And did you know God can still do some things to get your attention, to get you back on track? Yes. Amen. Amen. And you know, we have a purpose this morning. I've had times where the Lord said, you know, you need to go so-and-so and visit them or call them. I'm like, I'm scared to death. He said, I want you to go. I'll give you the words to say. And as an early pastor, I was afraid to go to the hospital sometimes and see somebody on their deathbed. But God gave me the words to say, the right things to say. And I've had people say, if you come back and visit me again, I'll call the cops and have you arrested. The next week, God called me to go back to that person. I'm like, Lord, you're not serious. He said, I'm serious. And so on my knees, I went to that place, and here that guy, the one guy was down in the basement ready to take his life. And he came up slowly, and it seemed like an eternity, but he opened the door, and there he was. He had the gun in his hand. And uh, he said, how did you know to come back here? And I said, I didn't know it, but God told me to come back. And it was just a Saturday before, he said, if you come back to this house, I will call the cops on you for harassment. And that's why when we follow God's call, his grace will always be with us. Amen. His strength will <coughs> always be with us. You can run away from God's will, but you can, and you can be angry about his will like Jonah was, but Jonah wasn't able to escape. Did you know that? You go back to Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, and you know, verse 3, he gets in his boat, and uh, verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Now, God can send a windstorm, can he? Amen. Here he's in this boat, and I'm going to get away from God. But then go down to verse 17. And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly and the fish for three days and three nights. I don't know about you this morning, but if I'd have been Jonah in that whale's belly or a big fish's belly, I'd be saying to myself, what in the world? Why did I run away from God? Now I'm in a fish's belly. And... I tried to imagine what he looked like when he came out. You know, some commentators said he'd come out blue and he lost his hair from the, the acid of the fish, you know. I used to always think when he got out of there, he's like, you know, the seaweed, you know, and little fishes in his hair and stuff. And, but the people of Nineveh knew something happened. Amen. And when God called Jonah to go, to go preach to the Ninevites, God made that happen. Amen. Amen. And so you can say here this morning, say, you know, God's calling me to do something, but I want to run away from God. Don't be too clever because God has the fish out there in the water that can swallow you up. It may not be a, a fish, but it might be something else. And he can send a windstorm. He can even send a, a flood if you're in the desert. I'm going to go to Arizona where it never rains. <laughs> ah, I seen Diane Young love last night. They had a storm like you wouldn't believe in Arizona. Wow. Things can change very quickly. Can they not? And God does that. And, you know, we have a car. Everyone here drove a car here today. And, of course, you're supposed to run a car on gasoline. Right? Petroleum. Is it Petroleum. Yeah, I call it petroleum. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in college, I had a good friend roommate named Stanley. We go into a wedding in Milwaukee, and we pull in a gas station in Watertown, and he's pumping away, and all of a sudden, there's 12 gallons. He goes, oh, he's like, that's diesel fuel. Oh. He shuts it off and puts the handle back, and then he grabs 
the gasoline and he gets about six gallons of gasoline in that Dodge Dart car. We go in, I follow him into the gas station and he goes, B, I pay with like, you know, $15 diesel, you know, and $8 gas, you know. And uh, the lady's like, you know, asking questions. He says, never mind, never mind, you know. <laughs> Why would you put diesel and gas in that car? But uh, we get in that car and I'm laughing so hard because I'm like, what's going to happen now? Because cars run on gas, not diesel fuel. <clears throat> he starts the car up and a big black smoke goes over the car. <laughs> and I'm laughing and we go to uh, Milwaukee. We had to stop somewhere. He shuts the car off and starts and a big black smoke goes over again and we made it to the wedding but that car smoked for a couple of weeks and i'm like it could only happen to stanley you know we call him stanley the whip slasher but uh oh the good old days in bible college and, I don't recommend you put diesel fuel in your gasoline car. It doesn't run as efficient. But God made man, us this morning, he made cars to run on petroleum, but he made us to run on God, of course. Amen? And God made this human machine and he wants us to run on him. Nothing else, because if you run your life on anything else, you're going to get in trouble. He's the one that designed you, made you. He's the one that gives you a purpose and a plan to life. He's the one that we should be walking with. Amen. 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 When you put God out of your life, you get in trouble. Amen. If you walk with the world, you get in trouble. That's, right. That's why religion is dead this morning. Amen. Because we cannot be satisfied or happy except we know the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. Religion is dead. Very dead. I like what C.S. Lewis said about mere Christianity. He says, you can run away from God's will. You can be angry about his will, but it won't work because he has a plan for your life. Amen. Amen. And some people say, you know, I had a bad past and I'm saved now. God has a plan for you to use your life for the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want you to go back to the past and live that life, but I want you to use it as a benefit for somebody else's life today. Amen. 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 Yes. And you say, but I don't want to have a prison ministry. Maybe God's calling somebody here to the prison ministry. Maybe God's calling someone here to the nursing home ministry. Bill and Kathy Rice, they were a young married couple in Tennessee, Murfreesboro, Tennessee area. They were so excited, and their first little girl was born. And a couple years later, they realized their daughter could not hear. And they began to get angry at God, and God said, I had a purpose for you guys. I want you to have a ministry with the deaf. And today, there's the Bill Rice Ranch in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And a couple years ago, I looked at their ministry and the results of their ministry. They had 2,000 young people that were deaf that cannot hear the gospel this way, but through interpretation and the horses, they have a whole bunch of horses there. It's a ranch to take deaf children. And 2,000 young people were saved you know here a few years ago. The Bill Rice Ranch is still going. And Bill and Kathy Rice later said, we thank God that God gave us a deaf child. We were never, never got into the ministry of working with deaf children. Now, sometimes we have things that go wrong in our life, but if you're with God, make sure that your life begins to be a positive impact for something that may have happened in your life for somebody else. If you're sitting here today and say, you know, this happened in my life. Did you know it's going to happen in somebody else's life? And that's why you have to find God's purpose and plan in your life. Sometimes things happen in our life that, to enrich our lives to become the men or women we need to be. Amen. You live your life for yourself, it's going to be miserable, isn't it? And the Lord provided, here, you know, in verse number four, he had a great wind come along, and then that great fish there in verse 17. 
I wasn't going to go full time. And I know why I had a stroke when I was 50 years of age. Because I was afraid to go full time in the ministry. I could make a lot of money farming and then church work was a side job. If the church didn't pay me, that was fine because I still had my farm job. And people were telling me for years, Pastor, go full time. You need to go full time. You need to go full time. I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. And there are some people who are not in the ministry at all today because they're afraid that God will not provide. They won't make a way. But God always makes a way. I want to go to Jonah chapter 4. This is kind of interesting. <laughs> I want to do more studying on this because it's got my curiosity up. Amen. It's been a while since I read Jonah, but very interesting. Jonah chapter 4, look at it, verse number 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, a merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than it is to live. Now I know people in our different congregations that some have tried to attempt suicide nine times, and it didn't work. And when they tell me these things, I tell them, you're still here for a purpose. Amen. 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 And you know, I used to say, if I didn't have any bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. You ever heard that saying, you know? And uh, as one person said, I tried nine times and I can't even kill myself. And I said, that's because God has a purpose for you. Amen. And you've got to find that purpose to your life. And then it's a joy to live. That's no right. matter what surroundings are, once you get into God's will, you can do whatever. It, nothing's going to phase you. Amen. 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 Because you have the Lord on your side who can be against you. But look at verse number four. Then said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Should I be angry at God this morning? I have personally been angry at God. When God took that farm from me in 1990, I was never going to preach again. I was never going to do anything for God. And he said, I am trying to get you to go full time. And I was mad at God. I said, pull out the rug from underneath me. But my wife will tell you I'm a better pastor than I was before. Amen. Better husband, better father, <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> because either afflictions make you gooder or worse. I mean, better or worse. I mean, better, better for worse, right? Amen. 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 To see if y'all awake here. But look at verse number five. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. He was going to sit back and just see what's going to happen. But look at verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, and it made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. But then look at verse number 7. But God prepared, oh no, God prepared a worm. When the morning rose the next day and smote the gourd, that it withered. You see, God can provide something and he can provide something else to take it away. Can he? And so what an interesting passage of scripture. I want to say this more because, you know, this gourd comes up there and grows over and protects him in the shade. He's comforted. The next day God prepared, it says, a worm. And the worm attacked that gourd and it withered. <laughs> and you know, when Jonah tried to run away from God, you know, he got in that ship and he's like, I'm on my way to Tarshish and I'm fleeing the presence of God. But as Psalm 139 says, you can never get away from God. When I moved to Dodgeville, I said, 
I'm moving away so God can't get my attention. Hmm. He was still in Dodgeville, <laughs> Wisconsin. I was in that long one mile driveway, 360 acres, but God was still there. Amen? Amen. He's no matter where we go. I like what D.L. Moody and, and Henry Varley, Henry Varley was a British pastor and he went to a conference of D.L. Moody's one day and they were at the Baptist church and he went to the Vartex or uh, by tree, which is a room off of the church, which is kind of like an office. But they had a private conference there with, with this uh, British pastor, Henry. And he said, we were, were all alone. And he says, do you remember your words that you said to me? He replied. Well, he says, I remember our interview, but I don't remember or recall our interview, what we talked about. Don't you remember saying, Moody, he said to Moody, he said, don't you remember, Moody, that you said the world has yet to see what God will do with a man who is fully concentrated, consecrated to him? Well, he said, I don't actually remember the sentence, he replied, Moody. But ah, said Moody, those are the words that were sent to my soul through you, from the living God. Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? And he says, as I cross in the Atlantic Ocean, as I was going to Chicago, he said, and the boards of the deck were engraved with them. And when I reached Chicago, the very paving stones seemed marked with them. Moody, the world has yet to see what God will do with a man who is fully consecrated to him. And then he said this, under these words, he said it was the most power in my life when I went back to England. He said, I had to let you know how God used me when I went back to England when we had that meeting where you said it's yet to see what God can do with a man who is fully yielded or consecrated to the Lord. Oh, that's my prayer this morning. That if we could just yield to the Lord, the Lord can do some really marvelous and great things, which we can't explain, but God can. Amen? Yes. Oh, He can He can provide like you would not believe. You know, I, I say this about this church when I came here. You know, I was ready to close, and God has done so many tremendous things over the years. And the Brooks Church, I mean, it was pretty well old-fashioned. Didn't even have running water. And what God has done there is just beyond my words. And I brag about what God has done at both of these churches because God is still on the throne. God still provides. God still takes care of us. And you say, do I have a sign this morning? I want to go to Matthew chapter 24. I can't believe, I thought this was going to be a short, short sermon today. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it gets along. Matthew, Matthew uh, 12, excuse me. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 38. I've had people say, I'm seeking for a sign. Then I'll start serving the Lord, right? Or if the Lord does this, then I'll go to church. I mean, we're looking for signs all the time. We look at verse 38 here of Matthew chapter 12. He says, Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And the men of Nineveh shall rise to judgment with this generation, and so condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, 
a greater than Jonah is here. Wow. And then go to chapter 16. Chapter 16 and verses 2 and 3. Sadducees and the Pharisees there in verse number 1 again. Ask again. Show us a sign. Everybody wants signs, don't they? But verse 2 says, He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. <clears throat> oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Do we not have signs today? Yes, do. Oh yeah, we have all kinds of signs. I watched again some ranchers in Texas. They had another auction this week. They had, just two weeks ago, they had a mile line of cattle trailers both ways coming to the auction barn. This week they had another auction because it is so dry in Texas that even the weeds are curling now. And a lot of the ranchers spread the weeds and they're all gone, so it's just nothing for the cattle. So they had an auction, three miles, they had cattle trailers, three miles, both ways coming to the auction there. Cattle sold for 30 cents a pound, but the auction went all the way, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, all the way to 5 a.m. that morning till they sold all the cattle. The farmers cannot feed their cattle. Is that not a sign in a turn in the news in Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, hit with a flood, and 16 people, last I heard, were, were lost their lives. It might be more now, right? 20, and 20 now. And then I turn on the world news, and China, they got floods like you would not believe. The waters hit them. And then Las Vegas had a flood this week. You know, like, wow. And... I say to myself, do we need a sign to serve God this morning? <laughs> do we? No. 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 People say, I'm going to wait till it gets worse and then I'll start serving the Lord. The Lord said, I have these signs everywhere. We need to be faithful. You know, we, we have that movie out there called Ground Zero where Cape Town, it was the first city that ran out of water and we know the Tigris River and the Euphrates River is going way down and the Rio Grande is going down. And, and uh, do we need any signs this morning to serve the Lord? His return is right around the corner. I want to close with one more verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And... Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 2. Because this is encouraging to me this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 15 to 17. He says in 2 Corinthians 2, 15. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the Savior of death unto death, and to the other the Savior of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God to speak, we are in Christ. And we were telling Julie Friday that when she got saved, the angels in heaven rejoiced. Right. Another sinner found Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. Mark 8, 38, what should a man give in exchange for his soul this morning? And I want you to leave this church this morning and understand that you are a sweet fragrance to God. Right. And that when God leads you to do something, he's going to be there with you. Yes. And that he loves you and that he cherishes you. Sometimes I have a hard time accepting that. Yeah. That God loves me. But he loves me. He careth for me. 
And I can go with them as Hebrews 4.16 boldly with the petitions that I have. So many people have had the hard time of following God's will for their life. If the Lord is with you, He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. I did a funeral Monday, and the auctioneer, and he wanted to teach me how to be an auctioneer, you know, and I would have loved doing that, but I said, well, God called me to preach, and I learned my lesson. I'm not going to jump out of the ministry. I'm going to stay preaching, but I'd love to be up there. You know, we'll give me 25 now, 30. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to be excited, but uh, yeah, you know, now 70, you know, and now 80, you know. But uh, God called me to preach, and he's with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Probably the hardest thing that I learned in my life was that God, when he calls you to do something, he'll be with you. He'll make a way. And God calls people different ways. Mm -hmm. And when he does, it may seem like there's no other way. Mm -hmm. But God is there to make the way happen. Amen. 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 And so don't be afraid to go through that door that God opens to you. You may be insecure. You may just feel like you just don't have it. But God can make a way. Amen. 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 So Jonah... I'm getting away from the presence of God, but oh man, he got in the wrong boat. <laughs> <laughs> Fell apart. And the winds came. And then when he finally jumped in the water, he thought he'd be swim the shore or something. I don't know what he was thinking. Wasn't planning on getting swallowed by a big fish <laughs> and spending three nights in the motel of the fish belly. <laughs> <laughs> But when he came out, the people of Nineveh, they knew he had a message for them. And they got it. And the city repented. Amen. And God wants to use your life this morning because he has a plan and a purpose for you. Never think that God is angry at you because God's never angry at us. God works things to get us to the place that we need to be. Amen. 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 So with our heads bowed and eyes closed, is there one here today who would say, Pastor, I have felt like God's angry at me. Something happened in my life and I felt like God abandoned me or was just angry at me. Pray for me that I understand that God really loves me and cherishes me and wants to work in my life. Would you raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'll not mention your name, but I want to pray for you. Is anyone like that this morning? I want to pray for you. All right. Father, thank you for this church and thank you for our openness to the word. And I know I was like Jonah trying to run away from my calling. The Lord said, I want you to be a pastor. I want you to preach your precious word. I want you to be a messenger. I was like Isaiah. I can't speak. But he said, I'll give you the words to say. And Lord, if there's one here today that's struggling with following God's will for their life, we have so many different scenarios here this morning. Everyone's life is different from the others. But Lord, if there's a door that they realize they should be going through and serving the Lord at, I pray that you'll give them the boldness to go through that door and not be fearful but to be confident. I like Philippians. Being confident is the very thing that he who had called you to a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we need to be faithful to him this morning. Let's all stand to our feet. And I just want to sing I Surrender All, just one verse as a prayer, as our prayer as we leave today. I want you to surrender your will to God this morning. I don't want you to surrender your will to anything else but to the Lord. People tell me I want to run away from America. I want to go somewhere else. Uh, it's all over now. No matter where, you, where you're going to go. We just have to get back to trusting God. Amen. I told my wife, we're as safe here in Oxford as any other place in the world. Because we have God as our shield and our protectors. Amen. Amen.
God knows our needs. All the Jesus I surrender. Let's sing it just as a prayer this morning. Okay?